Welcome to this clinical skills video. Today we are going to be focusing on cannulation. The objectives of this video are to provide you with a brief overview and framework for performing the cannulation procedure following the UHL guidelines. We will also direct you to further resources which contain more detailed information. To aid your learning, we will be breaking this process down into four separate stages. Stage 1 involves obtaining consent from the patient. When you enter the patient environment, you must decontaminate your hands, introduce yourself and identify the patient using full name, date of birth and hospital number. This should be done by checking the patient wristband against an official hospital document such as the doctor or nursing notes. You can then move on to gaining informed consent. In order to do this, you should provide the patient with a simple explanation of what you would like to do and why. Also describe the potential risks, for example infection or phlebitis, along with the benefits such as giving of IV fluids. After this, ask the patient if they are happy for you to continue. Once you have gained consent, you should make sure that you are safe to proceed by inquiring about their relevant medical and drug histories. This includes any allergies that the patient may have, particularly in relation to the cannulation equipment, for example the sterile dressing. You should also ask if the patient has been cannulated before and whether they have a needle phobia. More information on this section can be found in the workbook accompanying this video or in the UHL cannulation policy. Stage 2 requires you to gather the equipment for this procedure. The following items are needed for performing cannulation. A trolley, sharps bin, Inco pad for protecting the patient environment, two sets of non-sterile gloves and apron, one for cleaning your trolley and tray, the other as part of your personal protective equipment at the patient bedside. You may require goggles if you deem it appropriate. Hand sanitizer, Chlorclean and wipes for cleaning the trolley and tray, high-sided plastic tray, cannula pack with an appropriately sized cannula, disposable tourniquet, saline flush, two chlorhexidine wipes, one for cleaning the saline bottle and one for scrubbing the binector hub, blue needle to draw up flush, 10 mil syringe, binector cannulation extension. The cannula pack itself contains a cannula assessment record, gauze, chloroprep applicator, absorbent pad, cannula, clinical waste bag, sterile dressing. Stage 3 is performing the procedure itself. This video will demonstrate how to gather the equipment seen in stage 2 and correctly carry out cannulation. For the purposes of this video, we will be using a pink cannula, however the size of cannula may differ depending on clinical need. Start by decontaminating your hands. The WHO 7 stage hand washing technique must be used every time you decontaminate your hands. Don your apron and gloves. Clean the trolley using Chlorclean. You must ensure that you clean the whole trolley, but for the purposes of this video, we will just clean the top. Allow the trolley to air dry for a minimum of three minutes. During this time, you can clean your tray. Clean the inside first and then the outside using a different wipe for each. Remove your gloves and apron.
decontaminate your hands and wait for the tray to dry for three minutes. During this time, you can gather the equipment onto the trolley. Make sure that there is a sharp spin to hand. Do not put the unopened equipment in the tray at this point. You must now decontaminate your hands. Check that all of your equipment is in date. Open the chlorhexidine wipe. The saline must be checked by two members of staff. Clean the neck of the saline bottle and allow this to dry. Open the 10ml syringe and connect it with the drawing up needle. Make sure that you retain the packaging of the syringe. Draw up the flush using the needle and syringe. Keep the saline bottle for reference in case the patient develops a reaction to the flush. Once you have completed drawing up your flush, place the needle immediately into the sharp spin. Remove any air from the syringe and place it back into its packaging. This protects the key component. You now need to flush the bionectal line until you see the saline appear at the distal end. To do this, pick up the bionectal packet and partially open the hub end. Holding the bionectar just below the grey hub, insert the tip of the syringe and turn it in a clockwise direction. You must ensure the rest of the bionectar remains within the packaging and the key part of the syringe and the bionectar are not touched. Place the syringe back into the original packaging and gather the rest of your equipment. Place your apron and gloves onto the clean trolley. You should now decontaminate your hands and proceed directly to your patient. Once you're at the patient's side, make sure your equipment and sharp spin are within easy reach and decontaminate your hands. You should reconfirm the patient's identity against an official hospital document and confirm that the patient is happy for you to proceed. Position the patient so that they are comfortable and apply a disposable tourniquet to help locate a vein. It is good practice to initially attempt to cannulate the back of the patient's hand and work up towards the antecubital fossa if there is no suitable vein. Once you have located the vein, release the tourniquet until just before you perform the procedure. Don your apron and gloves. Take the cannula pack from your equipment tray and open it. You must keep the wrapper of the cannula pack as it has the cannula care pathway stickers. Open out the contents of the pack. Remove the chloroprep applicator from its packaging and squeeze until the inner tube breaks. This releases the chloroprep solution. Clean the proposed puncture site in a hash formation and allow to air dry for 30 seconds. Dispose of the chloroprep into your sharp spin. Reapply your tourniquet to help distend the vein. Do not repalpate the cleaned area of skin. Take the cannula and fold the wings flat. Remove the sheath from the needle and place in the sharp spin. Your fingers must not touch the needle. Apply traction below and to the side of the proposed puncture site to help immobilize the vein. Advance the needle, bevel up, into the vein at an angle of approximately 30 degrees. 
Care should be taken not to insert the needle so far that it continues through the vein and out the other side. You should observe a small amount of blood, the primary flashback, in the flashback chamber, as can be seen here. Advance the device a small amount to ensure the cannula is within the lumen of the vein. Securely hold the end of the needle and push the cannula forward off the needle into the vein. You should notice blood moving up the cannula. This is known as secondary flashback and indicates that you can now release the tourniquet. Hold the needle still and advance the cannula fully into the vein. Remove the prime bionector from its packaging. Press the vein distal to the cannula entry site to reduce the blood flow from the cannula. Remove the needle and dispose immediately into the sharps bin. Unscrew the white cap protecting the key part and while supporting the cannula, screw the binector onto the end. The cannula should then be secured with a sterile dressing. Start by removing the strips and place them on the wings of the cannula. Peel off the main dressing and wrap around the cannula as shown here. Remove the backing, saving it as you will require the date sticker. Before you flush the cannula, you will need to decontaminate the bionector with a chlorhexidine wipe. Flush the cannula by securely holding the bionector away from its key part and connect the syringe prepared earlier. Flush with 5 ml of normal saline, watching for tissueing at the cannula site. If tissueing occurs, the cannula is not within the vein and you should restart the procedure. Remove the syringe and dispose into the sharps bin. Clamp the bionector and dispose of the tourniquet. Ensure that you document the date of insertion using the sticker provided on the dressing and place next to the cannula site. Remember, if your attempt at cannulation is unsuccessful, you should restart the whole process from the beginning. Never reinsert the same cannula into a patient. You can have a maximum of two attempts, and then you must ask another colleague to perform the procedure. Stage 4 covers the aftercare of your patient. Discard appropriate waste into the clinical waste bag found in the cannula pack. Tell the patient that the cannula will be checked and flushed three times a day and will be removed after a maximum of 72 hours. If they experience any pain or signs of infection around the cannula site, or if they have any other concerns, then they should alert a member of staff. Thank the patient and ensure that they are comfortable. You should now decontaminate your hands before proceeding to the treatment room. Dispose of your equipment, making sure that the trolley and tray are clean for the next user. Inform the staff members who are looking after the patient that you have inserted a cannula and any particular plan of care that is required. Complete your cannula care pathway sticker and place it in the patient's medical notes, documenting any issues that may have arisen during the procedure. Commence the cannula care pathway and place it in the patient's nursing notes, which must form part of the patient's daily observations. This completes the cannulation video. Accompanying this, there is a workbook with test yourself questions. More information can also be found in the UHL cannulation policy. We hope you now feel more confident and wish you the best of luck.